What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlook here. So we're talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Saw X. We'll be talking about the Halloween franchise going over another update to the update we got earlier today involving Halloween and the future of the series. We'll be talking about Chucky Season 3, a little Q&A for you guys. Uh, and we'll be talking about the the future of the Scream franchise in the form of a video game. And I will leave the last topic a surprise review for you guys uh, for the end. Now, starting off here with Saw X. Saw X, to kick this off, and shout out to Saw Space for being reliable as always, but producer Mark Berg had this to say about Saw X recently. At the end of this movie, stick around for the credits because there is a scene where we do bring back people from prior Saw movies that you'll be very, very happy about. Now, I will say this. I was lucky enough to discover who at least one of these people are. And I think a lot of people, when you see who it is, you will enjoy it. If there are more than just one individuals that are involved in this post credit scene, that should be quite interesting. Although I have also taken note that somebody seems to be spoiling it over on Twitter. I'm not going to say who it is, although I will say that given the context of what we've already heard about the movie, this makes sense as to why it would be the post credit scene. It makes complete sense to me. I hope everyone, when you see Saw X later this week, you get to enjoy the post credit scene and enjoy the people that do show up. I at least know one of the individuals and I'm satisfied with who it is. And hopefully it is a post credit scene that can satisfy the usage of this individual. But you guys will get to discover who that is later this week. Let me know. Are you going to stick around for the post credit scene some people really don't care also are you going to check out saw x later this week let me know down in the comment section below why or why not uh diving into halloween so earlier today we got confirmation about a report that was making around earlier this earlier this year about the future of the halloween franchise miramax has indeed begun looking for the next home for halloween and a tv show isn't off the list of options either there's a bidding war reportedly going on according to bloody disgusting miramax is taking pitches according to one take news paramount is extremely interested in the halloween property and seems to be leading this bidding war malika cod's top priority also i guess this is one of the path past week ago down malika cod's top priority for the franchise is reportedly a television show set in the same universe as halloween 3 season of the witch this series would be six episodes long now this wasn't confirmed but big screen leaks is rarely inaccurate so if this if this doesn't happen i still believe the fact that this seems to be a top priority for a cod because this does not mean that it's going to happen it's just being reported that this is a top priority some fans might be jumping for joy at this possibility and meanwhile my Myers fans are like, well, where's Michael? Patience, patience. We all know that that man will be back at some point. I think you could actually see a TV show and a new Michael film happening all at once in the near future, which would be a win-win for fans that want a little bit of the same, while also people who, while they love to see Michael back in any incarnation, under the right circumstances, I would say. They also have a craving for something new, fresh blood, but not as much as they have a craving for Michael Myers. So if you can get a TV show set in the same universe of Halloween 3 and also simultaneously get a movie with Michael Myers back, I think everybody would be happy with that. Some people obviously would recognize that you don't need both. And I can admit we don't need both, but they're going to take advantage of what they can with how profitable the IP has been over the last couple of years since its relaunch. So we're going to probably see Michael back sooner rather than later. I thought it would be at least another 10 years. I now start to think maybe we'll see this dude back in another three, maybe less diving into Chucky. So Chucky season three, this will be a Q&A. So I'm only answering 10 of these questions you guys left. So listen good, because one of these might be yours. One of, you guys, one of you guys asked, are any other legacy characters making an appearance so far besides Andy? I will say I don't know that because so far, no, they have not. Of course, they can appear in the later half of the season because the season that's airing in October next week is only going to be four episodes. One of you also asked, will we see Gigi? No. As of now, as I mentioned, they are referenced, but that's it. And you find out how they're doing. There's a plan Chucky has for them that's also displayed but so far no i did not see lachlan i do think that we will see lachlan back at the later end of the season though i do think that another one of you asked do they tell how mrs fairchild knows about chucky that's a great question actually they they didn't do that during these first four episodes but we may find out in the second half from fairchild herself i will say that 
you one of you said what do i mean when i say caroline's arc gets absurd so it just has things that i struggle to believe because she's a little girl or a child in general doesn't matter if she's a girl boy doesn't matter think of andy skipping school in child's play to go help chucky kill eddie caputo but dial it up by a thousand that's how i felt with what i was seeing here between chucky and caroline it was just very absurd to me based on the first half of this season can we expect tiffany to have new motives aside from pinpointing nika and navigating prison well i think her new motive right now is to escape <laughs> but she doesn't waste time on trying to accomplish this either you'll you'll see her try to do this in the first four episodes uh, another one of you asked do we get charles and tiffany flashbacks no anything you can say about mrs fairchild's dynamic with the trio um she's definitely relating more to lexi i feel like because devin and jake they do have an awkward scene with her at one point but she's just trying to be a mother figure to them and it's really sweet but she definitely has more in common with lexi uh another one of you said is there a major death that's going to hurt us maybe <laughs> i mean it depends some of you might not care when this happens but i'm thinking of one specific death some of you might not care anything you can tell us about nika well she does enjoy watching tiffany get taken down and she'll reference curse of chucky a few times i will say that taking a page out of devin's book uh for the last thing here was me referencing that all of the kids are shown just using social media a lot more and i know devin has that podcast so that's really all i meant they seem to be leaning into social media more to track down chucky especially lexi so diving into scream scream seems to be having a video game of sorts on the way possibly big shout out to beyond the mask for their video yesterday highlighting that super massive games could be involved i love the until dawn series and their dark anthology games that they've been dropping over the past few years so scream would be a great story to tell in this format for a game with them involved a reliable leaker also named the tipster who recently had their last account deleted according to their twitter bio said this on twitter since it's being discussed online, based on what I heard back in May, there is indeed a game based on the Scream franchise in development. I never heard of a developer at the time, but in all honesty, Supermassive Games lines up pretty well. Now, the game might be announced next month, apparently, so we'll see if this ends up being true, but a Scream video game would be iconic and enough to hold me over until Scream 7. That's assuming it comes before 7, which it probably won't, but would you guys like to see a Scream video game? Let me know down in the comment section below why or why not, and if we do get a Scream video game, how would you like to see it done? Would you like to see an online multiplayer option or in the vein of just the single, single player for the story that's tailored? Similar to how you have, if you're familiar with the Telltale Walking Dead games or if you're just familiar with Until Dawn, what type of story would you like to be told in that format? Now, I'm going to jump into a surprise review for you guys. So the surprise review that I'm going to be going into is actually for VHS 85, which just had its world premiere at Fantastic Fest over the weekend. I had a screener sent to me earlier this morning. I just checked it out and I want to say that VHS 85 was another fun and grotesquely enjoyable entry in this long running anthology series unlike the last one this actually has an overarching narrative so it doesn't come off like a compilation of shorts that's highlighted in the synopsis if you want to go ahead and read that we have a made for tv documentary being captured at the center of it all revolving around a very interesting individual named rory wasting little time paying homage to the 80s horror films our first short is at a lake uh it's a lake trip with a a group of young adults at the center of it all we meet these group of young adults who have fun at a nearby lake it feels exactly like it belongs in the friday the 13th or sleepaway camp series but crossed with pet cemetery mike p nelson is responsible for this short and it went down a path i've never seen from the vhs series up until this point the acting was decent enough and it kept me engaged in true 80s horror fashion with an ensemble cast like this nearly every character is one dimensional but their chemistry as a group is undeniable there's an unexpected twist about midway once the bodies start dropping that really made these people a lot more interesting our second short by Gigi guerrero is a natural disaster survival involving a bunch of construction workers at a mexican tv studio now this one has a bit more urgency to it and that amplifies the terror felt throughout when you're watching all hope seems lost and despite 
all the characters being flat i cared about their survival the acting in this particular short was a lot better and the effects are far nastier and unnerving the third short centers on an early vr concept uh involving a techno glove a woman is preaching on stage to those in attendance that we have abandoned our gods for these artificial entities like vr and iphones this one leans more heavily into the gore and humor and the more it went on i was reminded of marine's opening kill in scream 2 so some aspects of it were funny other aspects of it were kind of like ha hauntingly gruesome and kind of showing how we're desensitized to stuff like this it was quick and to the point probably the shortest out of the shorts that we had on display our fourth short is from scott derrickson and it's a very apparent because his style is hard to miss when it's in the same vein as sinister and the black phone derrickson created an uncomfortable atmosphere through sound and unsettling images the mystery itself which involves police trying to solve murders that haven't happened yet was gripping there's great performances from everyone involved and probably my second favorite short in this entry was this one now in true VHS fashion, the aesthetic feels like it's right out of the time it's attempting to capture. Every director delivered something unique, but I'd have to say Mike P. Nelson's efforts was the most memorable and ambitious. Uh, I'd also say that overall, I enjoyed the gore. I enjoyed how everybody seemed to be trying to outdo each other. It's just another fun entry in the series i don't know what else to say it's not something i'm going to be overly critical on it's a series of anthology found footage movies you either like them or you don't like them but you guys so let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss a video in the description i have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video